It's a very, very big day for India's homegrown fighter jet, the Tejas. A vastly improved version of the Tejas called the Mark 1A has just taken its first flight. These are images from that first flight that took place today from the HAL airport in Bengaluru. The entire flight lasted about 18 minutes and now many more flights will take place before 83 of these aircraft in phases over the next few years will be delivered to the Indian Air Force. There are orders being processed for 97 more for a total of 180 of these aircraft that will finally be inducted into the Indian Air Force. Unlike the in-service stages, the Mark 1A that you see here taking its first flight today boasts of a slew of upgrades and improvements. Let me just take you through some of those big improvements now. Well, for starter, the new Tejas, the Mark 1A, will be sporting a new advanced radar, which gives it an all-new capability across the board. It has a specially upgraded electronic warfare capability that was actually absent in the earlier Tejas. It has updated avionics and a new mission computer. It has the capability, as a result of all of these developments, to fire more weapons and at longer range. It has a smart cockpit and displays, making it uh, an easier machine to fly and fight with for pilots. And very, very crucially, it is much easier to maintain at the squadron level, which has been a big demand of the Indian Air Force. Now, let me quickly just tell you some numbers as far as the Tejas is concerned to put this entire program into perspective and tell you why today is such a big day. The first flight of the Tejas took place in 2001, 23 years ago. It entered service 15 years later in 2016. The number of uh, Tejas aircraft in service is a little less than 40, about 30, 32 to 33 aircraft are currently in service. The number of squadrons is two, so those 32 aircraft are across two squadrons which are in Sulur near Coimbatore in Tamil Nadu. So far, 83 aircraft of the Mark 1A variant, which took its first flight today, uh, have already been ordered, but there is an order being processed for an additional 97. So 83 plus 97 is 180, and if you add that to the 40 aircraft, some of which are already in service, you're looking at a total final intended fleet of about 215 to 220 aircraft which will take place obviously that number will be achieved in the next decade to talk about today's first flight of the improved Tejas called the Mark 1A I'm joined now by two people who are very familiar with the program who've been watching it for many years and know more than a thing or two about the importance of today and what the next steps will actually be group captain Naranan Deepak is a uh, a former Tejas pilot, he's retired now, but he's not only flown the aircraft, but he's also very crucially been part of the team that tested the Tejas around the time that it entered service. So he knows more than a thing or two about the aircraft itself. Angad Singh, who you've seen before here on India Today and Battlecry, is our favorite aviation analyst and expert, and he also has written extensively about the Tejas, specifically on the Tejas Mark 1. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much for being with me on this important day. Group, group, group Captain Deepak, to you first. Uh, how important is the day today? The Mark 1A has been slightly delayed. Uh, you know, these were improvements over the baseline Tejas that had been agreed upon a few years ago. There was a lot of anticipation over, uh, you know, this order being speeded up so deliveries can actually begin. But finally, this first flight has taken. How important is it? Yeah, Shiv. Hi, Shiv. Mark 1A is, uh, is very, very important because uh, it's been delayed just by a few months. But the need of our, we need uh, much more fighters. We are down to 30 scones and uh, we need a lot more fighters. So the, the testing of Mark 1A is very, very important. It is going to be very, very crucial as far as shoring up depleting numbers and squadron strength of the Indian Air Force. So that's an important point that Group Captain Naran and Deepak makes. Angad, coming to you, you've written extensively on the Mark 1A. Uh, uh, you know, what are your first big takeaways from today? It's good to see the Mark 1A finally in the air. Uh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, glass half full. Uh, it's good to see the aircraft finally take flight. 
uh, the last couple of months have been uh, almost excruciating, you know, with all the all the back yeah. and forth on uh, when will it finally uh, get airborne. Um, but uh, you know, as as the group captain Deepak said, uh, the main issue right now is is numbers. So this yeah. is, uh, to my mind, this is the first step, a uh, 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 wonderful, a welcome step, uh, but just the first step on a very long road. Now HAL has to really buckle down and uh, uh, crank these aircraft out. Uh, as quickly as promised, I think they're, 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 they're targeting 16 or more uh, aircraft yeah. per year, which is one squadron a year now through about 2028, 20, 29, uh, which is a which is a good you know healthy production rate, and uh, uh, you know that's that that's going to be the real proof of the pudding. Okay, I'm going to come to production rate and the challenges that, uh, you know, HAL will be facing now that the first flight has taken place in just a moment. Uh, but Group Captain Deepak, you know, from a pilot's perspective, give us what you, you know, your sense of, uh, you know, how, how improved is the Mark 1A compared to the original Tejas in terms of what it can do? You know, you've been there in the trenches testing these aircraft, see what they can actually do. You've flown them extensively as well. Give us a pilot sense of... What is the difference, and how is this a better aircraft for the warfighter? See, uh, Mark 1A, it, it has an overall improvement in terms of avionics, and it, it's got, a, like you said, it's got advanced mission computer, it's got a higher performance uh, DFCC, smart multifunction displays, it's got a uh, uh, active electronically scanned array radars, self-protection jammer, and EW suite. These are very, very important, which was missing in Mark 1. Hmm. Especially EW. EW is very important and uh, that's what decides the uh, uh, role in combat and all. Yeah. So, how do you assess? And, uh, uh, yeah. Go, there are a lot finish, of improvements in terms of maintainability. Yeah. Important. Angad, what is your assessment of the improvements? You know, the Mark 1A was seen as a kind of, uh, 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 you know, compromise configuration uh, following the Mark 1. The Indian Air Force and the makers of the Tejas finally agreed on a certain set of improvements. How do you assess these improvements? How much better is the Mark 1A than the original Tejas that's in, uh, in service, Angad? Um, yeah, I think, I think the, uh, the improvements are useful. Uh... How does one put it? So the 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 the, the first Mark One uh, LCA yeah. was uh, it had a number of uh, shortcomings which the Air Force was fundamentally not willing to live with in the long term. Uh, the Mark One A can be seen as um, can be seen as a, a midlife upgrade hmm. that comes fresh from the factory. So instead of right. instead of building Mark Ones and then waiting 10, 20, 30 years before you upgrade them and then living with them for another 30 years. You're just doing, you're, you're advancing all that upgrade work and making it a contemporary, uh, uh, you know, state-of-the-art fighter today and rolling yeah. it out of the factory floor, which I think, uh, as compromises go, that was a really good one. That was a good call uh, yeah. back in, I think, 2015 when, when this whole uh, ball started rolling on Mark 1A. Um, and, uh, you know, something that we're not talking about, because India is not a weapons exporting nation right now, a major hmm. weapons exporter right now, but I think uh, the Mark 1A is also really useful in, in, in tackling that sort of export market. Uh, yeah. Because it's no longer an LCA with caveats and ifs and buts. It is yeah, uh, yeah. fairly state of the art, fairly contemporary, uh, you know, world class aircraft now uh, that you can take to market. Um, once we once we get the uh, indigenous uh, radar on there, it'll become an easier export item. There'll be less, you know, foreign governments and 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 things to uh, contend with for export clearances. So I think yeah. not just for the domestic customer, but uh, it's an important step forward for for realizing uh, the export trade. Group Captain Deepak, uh, the first flight has taken place. Uh, the, uh, you know, the March 31st was supposed to be that kind of deadline for deliveries to actually begin. In your view, and, and you've seen this close up, how long before deliveries can actually start now? From first flight to first de delivery, how long will that take? Normally, it's about four to six flight test sorties that takes mm -hmm. place for LCA, typically. Yeah, and uh, in uh, maybe another week or maybe two weeks, you'll be able to start delivery. Okay, a week or two weeks, Angad. The challenges before HAL, as far as production rates are concerned, you know, that's also been a sort of long-winded conversation between the Air Force and HAL. A spotlight has been on that production rate. Is HAL in a is in a, uh, in a position, Angad, in your view, to meet the Air Force's you know delivery rate demands? Um, that's, I think, best answered by HAL. Uh, but one, one thing I would caution is, is uh, 
not reading too much into the delay of the first flight uh, and trying to extrapolate that into into the uh, program uh, delivery rates because first flights generally i mean you know there, there's a lot of unknowns uh, once production hits its stride there's there's less unknowns and it's you're likelier to hit your your deadlines uh, and you know if you're lucky you might even claw back some of the lost time i think we've we're what two months behind on this project which is as as development projects go and especially indian development programs go that's uh, you know it's a rounding error that's a fantastic uh, uh, number for for day one group captain deepak uh, you know the the tejas has had a troubled development cycle you know for decades the indian air force has been you know reluctant skeptical about the tejas we've seen a pretty marked shift as far as the air force's attitude to the tejas is concerned with this first flight now and you know whatever is going to come up in the next few weeks and months do you think that's going to change for the better even more yes yes definitely see we had a we had a large break we had a break of almost 40 years hmm. from the last time uh, you know aircraft were tested that was from the time of maruts we had a gap of 40 years we had to cover it so we were pretty cautious in our approach yeah. we didn't want any accidents you know nothing in fact they just first crash happened just a few weeks before which it hmm. which itself speaks for itself it speaks volumes of the aircraft absolutely it does and uh, i completely agree with you one final question to you angad in that case is uh, uh, you know some some would say you know we're still talking about an aircraft like the tejas when you know we've got a china that's already in the fifth generation game everyone's talking about fifth generation fighters some are even talking about sixth generation fighters how does how does the tejas really fit into all of that has india uh you know wasted time as far as moving forward on fifth generation technology is concerned we do know that the amca program was recently sanctioned as well uh shiv uh before i answer that if you'll allow me to yes. for your viewers with a little bit of maths please uh, i just want to go back to what you said uh, last with you know the the air force being a skeptical uh, customer i you know i think you'll find uh, financially uh that doesn't uh match hmm. because the air force uh the air force is about 18 billion uh, a year in budget uh, the indian yeah. air force and uh, the united states air force has 250 billion right and and that's a 14 fold uh, increase if you if you scale the indian air force's uh, tejas order up yeah uh, to match the U- united states air force's budget uh, the indian air force is buying almost 50% more lcas today uh then the united states air force is buying f35s interesting mm. uh so uh, you know if you if you you have to keep things in perspective and in proportion and in proportion i think the air force's commitment uh in word and deed to this uh fighter is is pretty hard to fault and if and if they yeah. do get uh, picky at times about certain aspects i think as as the buyer they are entitled to that um <laughs> but answering Good your point. <laughs> answering your second question about the uh about the amca and the and the the lca mark 1 and where it fits uh you know that's a, that's something i've 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 written about in the past as well um we are we are industrially not so far behind the curve but uh, mm. you know we'll be inducting a fourth generation aircraft uh, into the late 2020s and yeah depending on how lca mark 2 goes and and you know all that uh there is there is a very serious um question mark around the value of inducting large numbers of fourth generation aircraft uh, yes. well into the 2030s so perhaps the mark 1a um, you know if everything goes well and everything goes smoothly with this program uh, maybe that can force uh, some questions maybe a rethink on uh, lca mark 2 um, because i mean to my mind uh, yeah yeah sure you know having these intermediate projects like lca mark 2 to to sort of bridge the gap between uh, mm, mm. mark 1 and amca on a on a on a technological development scale that makes sense uh, but we just don't have that kind of time yeah uh, because yeah. we are already seeing fifth generation aircraft proliferating in our neighborhood and the 2030s is going to be a decade very firmly off the fifth generation we're not going to have the luxury Absolutely. of you know mixed uh, fleets and picking and choosing our battles uh, so um, you know maybe mark 1a uh, forces that rethink and if hl can expand production beyond 60 yes. a year if we could do let's say two squadrons a year of this aircraft yes uh, it yes. might it might uh, take mark 2 off the table entirely 
uh, and let you know both the the technological side and the industrial side of the of national capacity to focus on uh, free them up to focus on AMCA. Okay, that's uh, excellent perspective, and thank you for uh, you know shining the light on uh, a first flight where there wasn't a lot of hoopla, not a lot of media attention. Most of it only happened on social media, but I'm glad we were able to give it some attention here on India today, as we always do with aviation and defence issues. So I thank uh, Group Captain Deepak and Angad Singh as always for being with us here on this episode. Thanks very much, gentlemen. Well, one of the privileges of being a journalist is the opportunity to really immerse yourself in a story. Now, the first flight of the improved Tejas, the Mark 1A fighter today, is a big deal by any measure. I like to think I have just a little extra appreciation for how big today really is. And that's because in 2019, I was invited to fly in a Tejas in the very same airspace that today's milestone flight took place. Sure, it was a joyride because I'm not a pilot, and apart from a few minutes of handling the aircraft at about 8,000 feet, I didn't really fly the plane, but the entire experience allowed me not only to get a taste of the aircraft, but to spend a large amount of priceless time with the pilots and crew that spend their lives with the Tejas. These are people who've spent their careers flying foreign origin fighters, but now gladly throw their weight behind India's homegrown combat aircraft. Today's first flight of the improved Tejas Mark 1A comes 12 days after the first ever crash of a Tejas. The first accident in 23 years of flight and 8 years of squadron service. Those are super enviable safety numbers and something the Tejas community is rightfully very proud of. With this deeply improved version of the Tejas taking to the air, the Indian Air Force, once skeptical and reluctant about the Tejas and rightly so as its customer, is not just an eager customer, but a wholehearted advocate of the Tejas's capabilities. I speak to Tejas pilots very often, and they're very excited about this plane that they love, now arriving with a slew of improvements that make it even more effective than it already is, and becomes much more friendly to maintenance staff and mechanics. Let's not forget the amazing community of non-pilots who keep these beautiful jets in ship shape for flight and combat duties. As someone who's strapped into a Tejas cockpit and cannot wait to film these warbirds up close very soon again, here's wishing the entire Tejas program and testing team and the unit that will receive these Indian fighters the very best, happy hunting, and always happy landings. Jai Hind.